Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Butter What Show. I'm Pat Regan. This is my co-host, my lovely assistant co-host, BrianCMoses.com. And we've got a couple of 3D printing slicer uh, topics to to tell you about. And Brian tells me he didn't know about either of these I things. I don't. So, yeah, so this is exciting. You downloaded the new version of Prusa Slicer just within the last few days. And you that means you have the new support. The snug. Snug. Support. Snug. What's a snug support? You know when you print the supports, you get a grid. You get like a chunky square thing underneath. The snug supports hug a curve. Well, if you have a curved object like in this picture here, they will hug the object and just be, you know, shaped like the object. Okay. Supposed to be easier to remove, but they're a little more fragile. They're more less likely to stick to the build plate because they're only a little narrow section. Huh. Touching the plate. Interesting. I'm a butthole, so I've I've migrated from Prusa Slicer to Super Slicer. You don't even get so snug I don't support. have the snug supports yet. Yeah, they're coming in the next version. I don't know when that's due. What do you So I don't get to try these right what away. What should I what should I print and do a time lapse of to rub in the fact that you don't get it? Something that ha needs a lot of support. support. See, and, sure. and might and I don't know if it's a lot. It might be a particular, you know, shape of print yeah. that will be better like this. My rule on 3D printing is look at the amount of supports it needs and see if I can get away with not printing them at all. None. None. Can I turn can this I... over? Can I cut it in half? In the same vein, I saw on Lost in Tech's YouTube channel not too many weeks ago, sometime in December, Kira has this new thing called uh, Lightning Infill. It's mostly hollow, but as your object, it's especially good for big objects. As you get higher up in the object, it'll start attaching infill to the walls of your part and build them inward so that there's something for the middle of the roof okay. to be printed on. Now, this looks like some kind of Pikachu with full supports was going to be 5 hours and 23 minutes okay. and 46 grams of filament. Well, the print time's about the same. 5 hours, 22 minutes. That was... 20 minutes shorter? 20 minutes Maybe. shorter, but it was also 30-something grams instead of 40-something grams. Okay. 37 instead of 46? That's a, that's a significant savings of filament. But I know he did a bigger one with... Uh, I should have wrote all these numbers down before we... Uh, the important thing is, I, well, I can't use it is the important thing, because this isn't this in Prusa or, or Super yeah. And neither of us use Cura, but it's a neat idea. Yeah. I don't really care about saving plastic, but I care about saving time. And if there's some models where I could save some time... Yeah, especially if you're trying to go fast, if you're iterating. And maybe I don't care how sturdy the part is. Most of the, the rigidity of a model comes from how many shells you have on the outside. Yeah. But that's a chonky part he has in his hands. That needs more than just walls. If you had infill through that, it would feel solid. And he's got his own conclusions about whether this is an important feature or not. And you should go check him out. It's uh, Lost in Tech. He has about 6,000 subscribers. This video has about a quarter of a million views. Yeah, I hope this comes to Super Slicer and Prusa Slicer also. That would be nice. It'd be fun would to be try nice. it out. I did a bad job finding numbers in there.